folks. God bless you. We're blessing a lot of natives out in southern Alberta. We've got a whole truckload of bread, and Jesus says, I am the bread of life. So those who believe in me will have life, but those who do not believe will not have life. So we pray that this bread will be a blessing, and many will come to Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. We are ready to go and uh, we'll see what happens. God always has an amazing surprises for us and uh, off we go. Be blessed. <laughs> Hello friends. This is Pastor Arthur Pulaski. Today I want to talk to you about a few things that I hear over and over again about being the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ in a time of crisis, in a time of difficulties. Saying it plainly, when you don't have, can you give when you don't have yourself? Can you be a blessing when you yourself are of a great need? Can you give something from the empty cup? I remember many times I was going to the streets and I did not feel like going. I was going over there because God commands us to go. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to our creation. But not all the time I felt like going. You know, flesh interferes. Flesh says no. Flesh wants to be comfortable, especially when there is a miserable cold weather or it's raining and you just don't want to go. You would prefer to watch a movie, sit at home and, and do nothing. You know, that's our nature. That's the flesh. And then many times I had this feeling, God, I have nothing to give. Absolutely nothing. I myself, I am down and, and I need encouragement. How can I go over there and encourage, encourage others if I myself am, you know, am uh, in trouble? So I had those thoughts many times and God reminded me over and over again that everyone can give something. Everyone can give little. When I went to the streets all those many times that I feel not like not going, I realized that the cup was actually not empty. When you obey God, He refills your cup every single time. So when I started to pray for people, when I started to preach, I realized, oh my God, actually the cup was never empty. I thought it was. But when you obey God, you realize that you always have something to give. Because you're not taking from your poverty, you're taking from His riches. So today I want to talk about two things right here in uh, second kings in second kings there is a story that i want to read this lady in second kings 4 verse 1 she thought she had nothing her circumstances were depressing she just lost her husband and her husband was a godly man he was a prophet of god and and he dies and he leaves her in death she was in trouble and they were coming to take her two sons so here is the story the wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha your servant my husband is dead so first tragedy the husband is dead the father of those kids died for whatever reason and you know that he revered the Lord he was a godly man but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Another terrible circumstance. Not only she loses husband, kids are losing father, but now she's in a financial difficulties, financial trouble. Alicia replied to her, how can I help? That's, a, that's the first thing. She's asking for help and there is always a question. Tell me, what do you have in your house? Some people will tell me, well, I have nothing to give. Some people will tell me I cannot give anything because I myself am in trouble. But here, this is what she is saying. Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little oil. So she actually had something. 
It was not that she had nothing. She had a little oil. You see, God can work with the little you have. He can use the little you have, either if it's a talent or obedience or a little oil. But he, if you give it to him, he can do use that for his glory. Alicia said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour out, put, put oil into the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. He gives her a clear instructions. Borrow as many jars vessels as you can and shut the door behind why because the neighbors if they're not walking for God they're going to kill your faith they're going to laugh at you and they're going to destroy what God wants to give you so there are some times in our lives that certain things we should keep it behind closed doors for ourselves whatever God is promising you hold on to it do not share it with those that will choke your faith will kill what God started to build she obeyed she left him and afterward shut the door behind her and her sons they brought the jars to her and she kept pouring God performs a miracle because this woman obeys she's following instructions you see if the church in the Western world would follow the instructions of God if the church would obey what he commanded us to go we would see miracles all the time on the left and on the right God would be pouring out his blessings his oil but because we have become a disobedient children of God while well, he has allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come and rule over us and he's chastising his church for disobedience when all the jars were full she said to her son bring me another one but he replied there is not a jar left then the oil stopped flowing. God performed a miracle. When every vessel was filled, the miracle stopped. She went out, she went and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. What a fascinating story of God's provision. In a time of crisis, I'm telling you, if you have a right attitude towards God, if you are in a good standing with the King, the miracles will be pouring in. Just like with Stritcher, just like with us. I mean, we have so much that the cup is overflowing and we're giving to others. We are receiving the blessing and we are giving the blessing. God rescued this woman because she obeyed. God rescued this woman because she followed his instructions. I believe as Christians, as churchgoers, children of the living God, if we would start obeying the instructions of God, no matter what the enemy will be doing, God will rescue us. We have entered into a very weird season. I believe the Antichrist is already out here somewhere. He's pushing this whole 5G, this whole pandemic virus has been released for a bigger purpose than the media are telling you. And by the way, if you're listening to the media, my God, you will be led astray every single time. They're liars. They are pushing their agenda for their own purposes. Actually, I believe they're working already for the Antichrist. They're preparing the way for a total control of the world and you see that every single nation right now is uh, receiving a mandatory test how to lock people in in certain countries they're beating people up police officers are trained to not serve and protect anymore but to enforce the law with terror i believe the antichrist has given orders to the people to terrorize the people for a short period of time to prepare them for what's coming. That's why there are such a dragonial charges. I mean, the governments are saying that they're going to give half a million tickets, half a million dollars ticket, one million dollar tickets, hundred thousand dollars ticket. I mean, this is insane. They want to rob your houses. They want to take everything away from you. They want to create fear in your soul, in your heart, in your body to bring you into submission. That's what they're doing by terror. 
And who brings terror like this? We know the devil. Can you imagine a cheese like this? It's with mango and ginger. Wow. The Lord uh, was ministering to me this morning about, uh, it actually came yesterday, uh, rebuild, rebuild. And Sunday was a message of God was wanting to, wanting us to strengthen the family altar, yeah. strengthen the family altar. We can go through a lot of avenues as to how we lost majority of, of obtaining, upholding the, the family altar. And so he's asking us, where he ministered to me was in Revelations 2, uh, 3, 2. Uh, strengthen which what remains, it, that's at the point of dying. You know, because our works have not been found perfect before his sight. Yeah. Uh, you're just getting Miles version of it, right? <laughs> but meaning of it is that you know we've taken a lot of things for granted, and a lot of us have uh, have abandoned the, the the family altars. I mean, we have a church altar, but we also have a family altar, and that's where we see a lot of it. We're uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, the thing that they had in common was that they built an altar for him. Yeah. And we begin to follow his principles, his statutes, and his commandments. And so with us, I'm, now I'm thinking inside the box. Uh, the reserve has lost a lot of it. And that where it began to really start losing it is when we allowed, when the, was it 67? 67. 68 or some in that time where alcohol was oh, allowed, yeah, we yes. were where it was open 66, to us 66. I mean it was there but we were there was a restriction oh sorry look at this oh wow the feast isn't the this feast. amazing yeah <laughs> feast but yes so you distributed stuff uh, and to your people yes and they really appreciate it uh, this is Gildas you know he helped uh, distribute it evangelist 
Oh, wow, awesome. And so the people were talking with us, and they were very appreciative of what yeah. we've done. Uh, and, and it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. It's just the okay, beginning. Come. <laughs> Blessing to be a blessing. It's blessing to be a blessing. Yes. I am so blessed, so overwhelmed. It is exciting. Okay, anything else I can go in here? Have lunch, get the Let's go to another scripture which uh, we can find in Mark 12 and it's another fascinating story because again people say well we've lost jobs we there's nothing we can do about it we're locked at homes uh, well even under those circumstances you can do something uh, you can go to a grocery store and you can be a blessing there. You can talk to your neighbors while you're there. When you're walking, you can say, you know what, no matter what the enemy is doing, God is bigger, stronger. And in the end, it says we all win if we stay with him. You know, amazing, amazing that the devil will try to destroy, but God always rescues those that ask him for help. And everyone can give something. So. The story in Mark 12, verse 41, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts. In other words, they were giving out of their abundance. They were giving the extra. They really didn't need it so much. They were giving out of their riches. What I'm trying to say is, it did not pain them to give. I mean, if you're a billionaire, to even give a million dollars, it means really nothing. You don't see a dent in your bank account at all. So they were giving large amounts. And they were doing it in such a way so people can see it. Oh, I'm the big shot. Look, look at me how holy and righteous I am. I'm giving so much. And that's why Jesus could notice the amounts. I mean, they were giving large amounts. How did he know that? Because they were making sure everyone knew that they were giving big amounts of money. But the poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a fraction of a penny. Can you imagine? In other words, in the human eyes, she has given nothing. Nothing really. But yet in the eyes of God, she has given everything. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty. She put in everything, all she had to live on. Fascinating, amazing story of this woman recorded in the Bible. So God saw this act of faith and he thought it's so important that it has to be recorded in the Bible. Why was she so important? Because she has given everything to Jesus. And in this time right now, in this time of crisis, in a time of pandemic, in a time of difficulties and terror, fear that you see all around you, you have to give Jesus everything or nothing. Everything or nothing. She has become a hero of faith because she knew her God and she knew that if she gives everything, she will gain everything. And that's what she did. Out of her poverty, out of her empty cup, she has given to God to honor Him, to say, God, my life belongs to you. I'm giving it all. There is this 
song that always touches my heart, all to Jesus we surrender, all, all of my ambitions, all of my plans, all of my desires, everything or nothing. God is shaking this world and whoever is sitting on the fence will fall. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will fall on the right side, not on the left side. Because what I see right now, this pandemic, this crisis or whatever you want to call it, is bringing the worst out of some people. Police officers beating people up on the streets. Police officers kicking elderly in Spain and other countries. Some people started to act like animals, vicious hyenas, wolves. But also in this time, you will see some pearls, some beautiful gems, gems for God. Those diamonds that God is polishing. And during this time, they're going to come out and the remnant of God is going to shine like never before. I hope and I pray that you will be on that side. That the goodness of God will manifest in your life and around, around the people that are in your neighborhoods for His glory. May the love and the mercy and the grace of God manifest in everything you do. Be the hands of Jesus. Be the hope. As we are going right now, the truck is loaded. Loaded with stuff worth thousands of dollars. And we're picking up some more stuff that we can bless the people in need. I mean, that's what the church is supposed to be doing. Being the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ. To tell them, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. Put your heart, put your trust in Jesus. And no matter what the devil does, God has everything under control. In the Bible, it says that the devil is like a roaring lion. But he's not a lion. He's a pretendee, he's a liar. And he wants you to be afraid, terrified, suicidal, depressed. But God wants you to have faith. You see, faith moves mountains. No matter what the enemy does, no matter how big is the Goliath, God is always bigger. You see, you and God, you're always the majority. Even if the whole world goes nuts, you and God, you're always the majority. Stay with him and you will be blessed. So I bless you today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And uh, I'm going to show you when we arrive at the location. And this bread, those hundreds of loaves of bread and hundreds if not thousands of buns and pastries and sweets and cheese and all other goodies are going to bless hundreds of people. Hundreds of people in native reserves. You know, they're locked right now and their stores are empty and it's very hard to get sometimes for some necessities of life. And we're commanded to go, so we go. Pray for us. And if you want to chip in, if you want to help, if you want to be part of this endeavor, please let me know. Art at streetchurch.ca. Art at streetchurch.ca. Be blessed. And remember, there are people out there in the neighborhoods that are waiting for their miracle. And you are, in the name of Jesus Christ, that miracle. Be blessed. You know why? Because if you're chicken, you will end up on my barbecue. <laughs> if you're eagle, I have never cooked an eagle. <laughs> so don't be a turkey. Don't be a chicken, because you will end up on my grill. Fly like there was eagles. A, there was a story about this this this, this native guy. Went to, went to went to go watch a, a soccer game, a football game. And this eagle was soaring. And he's the only native guy in the whole... Five th the stadium, an eagle was soaring, and the native guy put his hand, arm out, 
and that eagle flew right to the native guy, picked him up, and landed on his arm, and people were amazed. So us native people, we have a thing with the eagles. That's why in our native regalia we have eagle feathers. So the you know the eagle is, is very powerful to us. So we role model after the eagle. Don't end up a chicken because I'm telling you, it's hot on the grill. It's hot. It's a hot grill. <laughs> and God has a bigger one, right? Yeah. Oh. Our, thoughts, our thoughts, our ways ain't his ways. Yeah. And his ways ain't our thoughts. Because God, God, God works on the unknown and, and the mysterious things that we don't even know of. We don't see it. Yeah. But see, that, that, uh, but the, why we don't see is because we're in the flesh. Yeah. We don't think in the spirit. No, we have no clue. And when we're in, when we're in the spirit, God's going to show us these things. Yeah. And you know, I, I do believe that 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 through hard through these difficult times that we're facing nowadays, yeah. it's 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 the new norm that we're facing now. Yeah. And we were just trying to adjust to it, but I do believe God will will, will pour out a blessing through upon this. the people that is given out. Yeah. You know. God takes care of His own people. Just like when He took the people out of out of out of Egypt, yeah. He fed them manna. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he fed them all the way through. Yeah. And this is what's going on. We can't keep this overnight. Yeah. We can't keep this over two days. Yeah. We got to let it go. Yeah. We got to bless other people so God people can be more. blessed. God will bring more. You know, through this, what we've been doing throughout the community in Sixika, um, a lot of people have been really appreciative of what, of what the church is doing. Yeah. And the government is doing, you know, they're doing what they can do. Yeah. But we're doing what we're doing. We're, we're overextending ourselves. Yeah. And through that, I believe we got the protection and we got the blood of Jesus upon us. That, that we're overcomers right, over, over this coronavirus. And I, I believe. Actually, sorry, I actually believe we are the ones supposed to do it, not the government. No, not the government, yeah. We're, we're the ones. Supposed to, we're we're supposed to, and that's what's going to fall back on us one of these days. That's right. It's that's the church fall. that has to do it. Yeah. We have to get out of our little comfort zone and just go serve yeah. be like star trek boldly go where no christians has gone before <laughs> you know what about three years ago i come home from work and i turn on chuck i'm not my favorite preacher but i listen to him and he said as finishing statement was he said let's finish strong and for three weeks this worked on me let's finish strong yes yeah, that's, that's he said right. to me many years ago, he says, those that will endure to the end shall see the glory of the Lord. Yes. Him that overcome Not the it. beginning, but the end. The, yeah. He said, yeah. him that overcome it would sit. He would give us a crown. A yeah. nation of priests, kings. Well, we, can't, we cannot despise the small beginnings. No. We no. cannot despise the small beginnings. Because look at Moses. He had to go back into the forest to learn the small stuff. That <laughs> That's where the training ground is. He had to learn how to go back out to, in the training ground to learn how to even clean done. Yeah. To do all these kind of work. He had yeah. to be humble first to yeah. go out to take out the people out of Egypt. But I do believe God's going to make a way for us. Oh, I believe you know. Because he's always you know. taking care of his people first before he takes care of them. Yeah. In the meantime, we're, we're going to grow. We're going to grow by fire. Yeah. We're going to grow by fire. So, friends, it's so simple. The Bible says when you give to the poor, you're lending to God. That's the only scripture that God says that He owns you anything. I mean, it's incredible. It's amazing. So go out there into the community. Knock at the neighbor's doors and tell them it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. Be the hands of Jesus and uh, give to the poor because that's the heart of God. God wants to raise the poor and those people that are in need. And you are the answer to their prayers. Be blessed and see you next time. That was special.